All right, we are off to Texas again. Starting to see a pattern here. There is definitely a pattern. It's because we love Texas. There's so much to hunt down here. It is the uh, end of May, getting close to the 1st of June. This time we're going to South Texas to see my friend Charles, who happens to have about 6,000 acres of free ranging access. So this is for all my elk hunters. We all know that the rut is some somewhere September-ish, October, and that's why we all wanna hunt. But what if I told you that you could hunt the rut in May? So why are we gonna hunt in May that's rutting? How about free range axis and free range black buck? It is an absolute blast. We've had such a good time down here with Charles. We've been working with him, uh, sending our clients to him for years. He just picked up a couple of new ranches and they are phenomenal. You'll see that the, um, the, um, the land is pretty much like, to me, like going to New Mexico in the Gila. So great opportunity for spot and stock. You've got these oaks um, that are all over the place. And uh, so you can go from spot to spot and, and get really close. I mean, if you're an archer, you can get in. Uh, his son Tristan uh, killed a really nice axis with his bow. And uh, so it's just a great opportunity to kind of break up the seasons because the rut, we're uh, right, at, uh, right at the end of May on into the first part of June, the rut's going hard. Uh, black bucks are also rutting as well and this place is loaded. So if you want to do something like that, give us a call at the Outdoor Solutions office and we will definitely hook you up. I've got to explain something to you. I am not a lucky hunter. I will be 54 years old this year and I have never shot a big game animal on the first day of my hunt, ever. 40 minutes and I'm done on this particular hunt. And not only am I done, we passed on two bucks prior to the one that I actually shot. This place is incredibly loaded with axis. I'd never seen anything like it. The rut was going on. The other thing that was happening that I want you to pay attention to is the black buck, buck rut was going on as well. And right before I shoot my axes, if you'll look kind of the left center of the screen in between the two trees, you'll see a nice buck chasing some does around. That was happening the whole time that we were there. It was a fantastic time.
that was quick. <laughs> All right, as you can see through the Tacticam view, I actually put a pretty good shot on this uh, Axis buck. A little bit forward than what I wanted it to be, but I went through both shoulders. This is my first time hunting Axis. I really didn't know what to expect. And if you've never hunted them before, when you see them out walking around, they look like an elk. I mean, they look ginormous out cruising around. So I'm thinking, man, this thing's a world record. He looked huge. So we're walking up to him and as I'm getting closer and closer, I have never seen an animal ground shrink as much as an Axis does. And I'm thinking, what in the world did Charles let me shoot? And so I just asked, I was like, so is this a good one? He's like, hell yeah. He was excited and he starts measuring with his hands and I can't remember the numbers now, but I think maybe 28 or 30 inches is kind of the goal that everybody looks for. And this one was 32 or something like that. So Charles was super excited, so I'm excited. I went in there for the antlers anyway. I am going to put it up on my wall because it's my first one. I was there so we could have some meat in the freezer. But just an FYI, if you go to hunt them and you've never done it before, they ground shrink like nobody's business. I like that not, not being so loud. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it don't scare many animals. Yeah, it doesn't scare many animals. That's a, a guide saver. <laughs> Ear saver. Uh -huh. So usually when we bring these, usually the guides tip <laughs> us. That is so cool. It almost sucks that we got this many animals. Your hunt's over. Not really. <laughs> we'll still have fun. We did, we did bring the checkbook. So. Hmm? We did bring the checkbook. <laughs> Wait a second. You just said guides tip you. Yeah, for, nah, for, that's BS. for bringing a suppressor. <laughs> Usually the guys leave it for the guides. <laughs> the suppressor? Yeah. yeah that, that would be illegal. Nah. But that's how good we are. The guides are like, you're so much fun to hunt with. Here, <laughs> here, 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 here's a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for hunting with me. Yeah, just I'll so call you know. Deborah. <laughs> All right. And Thank actually you. what I like to do is go out with the outfitter. Mm -hmm. So, cause I usually get a tip from him and then go out with one of the guides. I, I got gas go. money to get home. I gotta go. Not much of a trail job on this. <laughs> Didn't have to. Very really sweet. Yeah, I don't know a, a good one from a just coming out of velvet. From a not good one. <laughs> yeah, he is yeah. starting to scrape up a little bit, isn't he? Was this one that we saw earlier? No. It's a different one? Yep. Oh, he's nice. He's got decent cows. Not, not small. Yeah, he's a good one. Cool. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> the first one I've ever shot. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks, buddy. That's awesome. Get his shoulder in. Uh huh. Yep. Where'd we get him? Right there. That was forward more. Chef's not gonna be happy with me. Yeah. I wasted a shoulder. It's probably 32, 33. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Well, that is right on the shoulder. Mm. Yeah, so we wasted just a little bit. Man, they're gorgeous. So at, at this size, like what age, you think? He's mature. He's probably five years old. Is it? Yeah. And they're beautiful. They are gorgeous. Mm. Black, black stripe down their back. So what's hunting camp without a little smack talk? Especially if your buddy's not there to defend himself. So you'll hear us talking a little smack on my friend Dave, and I figured maybe I should explain who Dave is. So you have Dave Poteet and Tim Manello. Both are good friends of mine from right here in Oklahoma. Actually, Tim 
does the editing on a lot of our videos that you see and Tim and Dave together are inside outdoors TV that has been on the outdoor channel for years and years and years. So anyway, we're all buddies and Dave likes to talk a little smack. So I just thought I would get the jump on him, especially when he wasn't even there to defend himself. So here's uh, so here's here is a qualifier. I know Dave and Tim are coming down. Mm -hmm. If Tim shoots a one bigger than me, I, I'm okay with that. But Dave, no. Oh He's, well, we can we can control that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah. And and I don't care if Dave knows that. And that Tim I don't never want him complains. And no, Tim doesn't. That's it's kind of like a marriage. <laughs> you get one that does and one that doesn't. So. <laughs> Well, should we say what Dave is then? <laughs> I think Dave knows what Dave is. Yeah. So get a good look, Dave, because I know you haven't shot yours yet, but mine's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Awesome. Pretty, pretty. All right, well, the advantages of getting done on day one or within the first 40 minutes of day one is that you have plenty of time to get the butchering and processing done. One of the disadvantages of hunting in late May, early June in South Texas is that it's 100 plus degrees down there. So you have to get it done quick if you don't have some type of cooling system. Now fortunately, Charles is set up really well. He's got a big walk-in cooler. So we got the uh, animal field dress, of course, right away. And then we skinned it right away just so that it could cool down as quick as possible. And then we put it in the cooler overnight and uh, let it hang which does a couple of things. One, it lets the, uh, the sinew and everything that holds a lot of the muscles together, it lets it get hard, which makes it a lot easier to butcher. So we went ahead and got everything butchered while we were right there in camp. We brought some of our processing equipment from meat. We brought the vacuum sealer and I actually got everything 100% processed. Actually, I shouldn't say 100% because we didn't do any grinding while we were there. We decided we would do all that whenever we got back home but we got everything completely broken down into individual muscle groups, vacuum sealed it, put it in the cooler, and was able to make the ride home. We had an absolute blast coming down here. I mean, just from even just packing up, getting our gear ready, and uh, the drive down here, it's about a 10 hour drive for us to come down and see Charles. And, uh, and then of course getting here and the actual hunt, which only took about 40 minutes, uh, was a blast. But the main thing is, is that we are actually living the from field to table lifestyle and we're actually living the learn from field to table lifestyle. We're relative for being in business for 16 years, learning stuff from a chef's perspective uh, and the help that we get from Chef Wutch has just been invaluable, gives us a whole new connection um, to our food and doing all this 100% ourselves and knowing where our food comes from. So we are having a blast. We hope you guys are too. But anyway, got a little bit of top round here and uh, we're, break, we're breaking down completely a hind quarter that we're going to take home with us. And actually we're going to take some of this to Utah for our uh, first group of uh, long range shooters that are coming in and uh, they're going to have a little bit of a special treat. So I'm looking forward to cooking some of this up. So I just want to show you guys real quick what we were doing. We we're getting ready to pack up and leave, but uh, I just cut the, uh, the back hind leg off. We'll get a little bit more off of it, but this is on a hind quarter and um, people worry about the butchering, myself included. You know, if you don't know one cut of meat from the other, which a year ago I didn't because I took everything to a processor and let them do it. But now working with Chef Wutch um, uh, for the past year, uh, I've learned it's really not that difficult. And so on this hind quarter, you can see that there are seams everywhere. And so each muscle will literally just pull apart at the seams and we've got this nice and cold too so it's been in the uh, in the walk-in freezer and so that just makes it a whole lot easier i mean you can just really if you got a good sharp knife just touch the edge to it and it'll start pulling pulling everything apart and you can see how those muscles separate so what i'm pulling apart here is the top round which is a more tender cut and actually very versatile of how you can cook it so I'm cutting it away from the eye around. I need to sharpen my knife a little bit. So just separated that from the eye around. Now you've got a nice top round it's shaped like a heart. Those are the only things that we look forward to identify. And that is an awesome cut. 
So right next to that is the eye around, which really looks like a uh, tenderloin. It's got a lot of gristle and fat. Actually, somewhere in here, there is a uh, gland. I just don't remember exactly where. But you can see, so I'll pull this apart. I didn't pull both shanks off. I just pulled one side off. So this bottom, down here at the bottom, is the other side of the shank that goes right around the bone right to the bottom of the ground which is going to be one of the toughest cuts but also the most tasty like chef says closer to the ground the tastier it is so there is actually so there's both sides of the shank i'll just trim this end off and we're going to save that we might do a uh, eddie just said something about doing uh some corn venison so we might utilize that we might utilize the uh, sirloin or Actually, there's going to be a really cool article on our blog called Cooking a Football. And so this will be a, a great example to show you what Chef is talking about, of how to cook a football. Obviously, we're not talking about a literal football, but this is your sirloin. So this is, is like, the, like the thigh muscle and uh, a lot that you can do with it as well. But there's a really good article on our blog from fieldtotable.com. You got to check that out. It's one that Chef Witch wrote for us and uh, to give you some really good ideas. And there's a couple of recipes there too, what you can do with the football. So anyway, kind of cool. So that is actually your sirloin. And what I was talking about a second ago is the eye of round, which looks like, like I said, a, a tenderloin, but it is definitely not as tender as a tenderloin. So that is the eye around. And then your last one that you have here, and we are going to clean all these up. So usually what we will do is, um, you can still, we still have sinew and, uh, and here's some silver skin on that. So instead of cleaning everything up now, we just uh, wait until we pull it out of the freezer. And this does a couple things. One, it helps protect from uh, freezer burn, but then um, also really cuts your butchering time down. And uh, then whenever you're ready to pull that particular piece of meat out of the freezer, then you just clean it up and it just takes just a little while because it's just one piece that you're pulling out. So that is your uh, bottom round off of an axis. And we're good to go. We're gonna vacuum seal it up, take it back to Oklahoma. All right, we hope you guys enjoyed this adventure to South Texas chasing axis around as much as we did. There's plenty more coming y'all's way make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Outdoor Solutions Hunting. Please hit that subscribe button, give us some likes, leave us some comments, and let us know what else you'd like to see. Like I said, we have a lot of good stuff coming up. We have more bear hunts, mule deer hunts, elk hunts, all kinds of stuff, but we'd love to know what you guys would like to see as far as more quick tips also. Hit that subscribe button, and we will see you on the next adventure.